first service in 2013, and you know there's the whole resolution thing that has gone on. A lot of people have thought, you know, you're going to die. How many of you said, you, I'm not dying. I, I gave that up. I'm trying to eat right. That's, I've got a new theory. Uh, some of you said you were going to die. You don't want to show your hands because you've already broke that resolution. You, you broke that with that large pizza you had last night. I, I, Miss Lou, I understand. I praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, 2013, when you think about it, how many of you think about this year with optimism? How many of you are excited? This is a new year. You don't have to be burdened and bogged down with everything that happened in 2012. You can get excited and, and say, this is going to be a different year. JG, I'm going to do something different this year. I'm going to, I'm going to look better. I'm going to get fitter or uh, get fatter. I mean, you know, whichever the one you want to do. I mean, we went to uh, Julie's family, had to get together last night. And, of course, you know, at the family get-togethers, I'm at the age now where I can't compete with them. They all are rich, so I figure I'm, I'm not going to be very rich. So, so I look at them and say, oh, I see they put on a few pounds. <laughs> Hey, Amen. Glad I'm glad I haven't. I've stayed fat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> amen. But 2013 should be full of optimism. You know, uh, I was watching ABC the other night, and I was watching TV. Lord, forgive me. I I know. Uh, but I was watching ABC the other night, and they said for people who lose weight, 85 percent of them put the weight back on. If you lose 40 pounds or over, 85 percent of people. Put that way back on. And I was thinking, I thought, wow, with all the optimism I've got of going into 2013 and, you know, wanting to, to try to trim down a little bit, I thought, wow, if that ain't a punch in the gut, you know. Uh, but do you see that even though that we look at it with optimism, there are going to be struggles this year? There are going to be things that we have to face this year that, that maybe we're not prepared or ready to face? Uh, I'm ready to put the, the doors closed on 2012. I'm ready to open up the door on 2013. But see, here's the problem this morning, churches, is, is at the end of the year, if you're like me, you go through the holidays, you get a little complacent. You go through the holidays and you kind of let down because at work they slow down for five seconds uh, or... You go to all the Christmas parties and see everybody and do everything. So your mind is focused around the things that are not normal for you. I mean, because most of you are not normal. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so it's normal for you. Um, but we get unfocused. We get uh, what I call uncalibrated. Because, see, uh, we, we lose sight of the direction that we're, we're going. And the same is true in church, because being that this is our first service in 2013, I thought, wow, you know, we've slowed down that last quarter. We said we were not going to do as many uh, evangelism outreaches, and we were not going to do this, or we were not going to do that, and we began uh, focusing on Christmas parties. And uh, if you missed our Christmas party, shame on you, because it, it was good. Amen. It, I ate and ate. That's why I need to lose weight in the new year. Uh, but <laughs> praise the Lord, it was all that pico de gallo. That, that, that's what it was. Uh, but uh, we lose sight and we lose focus. So we as a church and we as Christians need to, to get refocused. See, I don't know about you, but my relationship with God is kind of like this. I'll go for a period of time and before I know it, it's almost like my marriage, I get in a rut. With merit, come on, y'all ain't want to admit that. You're, you're not going to want to admit that, that sometimes with your marriage, you just, you go and you go and you go and then you realize, of, uh-oh, we, we need to sit down and talk or we need to go have a date night and remember that we're married. Praise the Lord, y'all are all doing so well. Here I am studying to become a pastor or a counselor. It's going to do me no good because y'all are all living in a utopia. You are, you are, your marriage is a perfect, you, you can't wait to see her, you can't wait to get home and see your wife, and the wives are, can't wait to get home to see your husbands, and 
spend time with your children. And, uh, you can't wait to have to change those dirty diapers. And Is that like, no. But see, we get in a rut. And we go through all of that process and sometimes we have to, to sit down and talk or go on a date. Well, the same is true with God. About every quarter, I have to sit down with God in my, my uh, alone time with Him and say, Lord, I need, a, I need you to check me a little bit. Lord, we need to talk about what's going on because I'm, I'm just not feeling it. Or, Lord, I'm, I'm being convicted, so let's sit down and talk about this situation. And what comes from that is a focus. God will give you a focus or give you a vision of which way you're to go. So, so see, what has happened to me personally is during the holidays, uh, I've become in a lull. And what transfers from me to the church is... The church becomes a lull. If in the ministry, I, I get in stagnated or I get into a, a rut, then the church will get stagnated and it will get into a rut. It Believe it or not, it passes down from me. I'm passing something on to y'all. Amen? Other than a cold, I'm passing something else. So this morning, being the first service in 2013, I thought we'd talk about how we're going to get out of this rut, how we're going to fire the wheels back up, how we're going to turn this thing. Because, see, here's what I know. In the, we, we peaked in uh, August and September up to about 90, middle 90s in people. And we were seeing people saved every month, multiples of people saved every month in this church up to about September. And then October, we gradually just stagnated. And then November, we kind of slowed down. And in December, we actually took a step back. Now I look around and I see empty chairs this morning. And I say, how do God, this has been my prayer all week. God, how do we get it back? How do we get back to growing? Because see, anything that you do for the Lord, the Lord will bless you. And if you're to be in God's will as a church, you're going to be growing. I don't care what anybody says, you're going to be moving forward. People will be saved in your ministry. Uh, the church will grow. Guess what? In your life, when you're working for the Lord and you are focused, God will prosper and grow you when you are working within His will. Can you say amen to that? Everybody with me so far? We're going to read from 2 Peter. Chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. And as you, as you go there, let me, let me say, we are very blessed at this church in the sense that our lulls only last about two months. And then after we get through that lull, God says, you know what? He says, we're going to bless you. We're going to rise up some leaders. We're going to rise up some people, and we're going to go forward. But folks, we've got to get focused right now because we're about to see that God is waiting on us we're going to read here in second Peter uh, the apostle Peter's words I'm going to read from the NIV this morning so if you have the King James same meaning uh, different different uh, word and here reading in second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Let us pray. Father, I pray that you'll take my lips this morning, Lord, and my tongue, and overcome my inabilities, Lord, to, to send forth your word. Father, to motivate these people to see that the time is short, that, Father, this may be our last quarter or our last week. This could even be our last day. So we've got a work to do, and we've got to go do that work. So, Father, right now I challenge each person in this church in your name to rise up and take a hold of the responsibility you've given them. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So, Peter here outlines that God is not slow on what? His promises, right? 
You can read the whole Bible and you're going to find out that in every chapter of every uh, uh, book, of every, in every verse, that God gives promises. And every one of those promises will come to pass. You're 100%. You can be assured 100%, Joanne, that those promises will come to pass. Now, the big promise is that he is uh, soon and very soon that he's going to send his son back into this world. He's going to descend from the right hand of the father down to the earth. A trump's going to blow and all the saints are going to rise up to heaven. That is a promise. But here's the, here, that's the good news. The bad news is while you're ascending, there are going to be some that's left. There are going to be some right here, believe it or not, right here in Crosswalk Church sitting in the chairs. There are going to be some still glued to the chair. Saying, when's Pastor Ron going to get here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I hope I ain't going to be here. Can I say ain't? But here, Peter says God has given his promises. He's given them, but he's slow to react. Not slow according to what we, the reasons we would give as being slow. Kind of like when I'm out there trying to run a mile and a half, Jose, and it's real slow. <laughs> Amen. I'm out there barely at a crawl. But it's running to me, Miss Lou. I mean, it's flying to me. Uh, that's slow. But what Peter is saying is God is waiting on something to fulfill that promise of his son. And guess what he is waiting upon? He is waiting upon you and I to get focused to say it's time to go see people say. It's time to get out of the chair of complacency and to go tell our families that Jesus Christ is Lord and King of all. And it's time for us to go do that. See, God is waiting on us. He's patient. Because, it, believe it or not, here's the thing. We think sometimes that God sent Christ back just for us because we're saints and, you know, we're perfect. Got it all figured out. We're, we're perfect. So God sent Jesus for us because we're perfect. Now, I can't help the rest of you ain't, but I... You know, I mean, when you got it, you got it. No, right? See, if Julie was in here, she'd be able to outline the 500 things that's wrong with me, Samara. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I may only have one. And that's my, my new beard is gray. It used to not be that way. Yes, I like to say that's from being married to Julie. <laughs> Amen. Uh, <laughs> Praise God. Last 12 years, it used to be black, Pastor Gordon, but it's, it's never mind. Uh, God is waiting on us because it's God's will. He sent his son, actually, he sent his son so that nobody perish. See, it's God's will that everybody would accept him. It's God's desire that everybody would call upon the name of the Lord and say, I repent of my sins and believe that, I, that you died and on the third day rose again. And everybody be saved. But guess what? See, that's, that's the unique thing. Man, I'm way off track of my notes. Y'all going to have to help me out this morning. This is one of those sermons that could go on for days. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And none of you are smiling so... And none of you willing to say amen. I'm in bad shape. Do I have water? Pray, I got water this morning. I can go for at least a couple hours. I'm, it's at P90X. <laughs> amen. Hey, the Lord. Y'all going to be in bad shape if I get in, if I get in physical condition. Because then I could go longer without getting winded, Tony. I get, now I get sweaty and I got to, got to stop every five minutes. Praise the Lord. God is waiting on us to achieve a... Uh, our work to do a personal assessment and say, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm ready to, to move on. I'm ready to get focused and, and focus back up on God. See, I told you about how uh, I can get into a lull sometimes and how it's transferred down. Well, see, this year, here's what I know. I can get focused and I can be wide open, Dale, 
But there's going to come a point that I'm going to get tired. There's going to become a point that I'm going to get battered and weakened down. I know that because 2012, if y'all may not have known it, but I was going through when, when Braxton, we were in the height of Braxton. I know, Caitlin, let me tell you something. You're not in this thing alone. And I want you to know that this morning because my heart is crying for you right now. Because I know what it feels like when the doctors tell you something about your baby. You see, church, that's, that's already, the enemy already has tried to batter you this year. So I know that if I'm wide open, he's going to come and he's going to try to tear down and beat me down. But you see, I remember this little story in Exodus chapter 17 when Joshua went to fight the Amalekites. And the Bible says, if you want to turn there, it's Exodus uh, chapter 17 verse 11. And here's what the Bible says. Uh, Joshua was sent forth and Moses goes up to the hill. And here's what the Bible says. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Moral of the story is when Moses got tired and he would drop his hands, the Amalekites would begin to overtake Israel. But when Moses would raise his hands with that staff, the Israelites would begin to take over the battle. Let me tell you, I may get weak this morning and I may get battered this year, but I expect some prayer warriors to take and lift my arms back up and say, let's push this thing forward. You see, a young lady may get tired and battered and beat down because of the news she may get or, or what the doctors say, but it's time that we as a church start raising some arms and say we're going forward and not let the devil defeat or destroy us. You see, church, it's about getting focused. It's about saying what are we, what are we purposed to do? Now, I'm not... Uh, I'm not a, I don't agree with everything Rick Warren says. Uh, he and I have a different uh, doctrinal beliefs. But one of the things about the, the purpose-driven life that he wrote is, I do believe that every person in this church has a purpose in the army of God. You have a purpose for living your life. My, my own mother sometimes, bless her heart, I pick on her all the time, but I'll go on and pick on her this morning too. She'll say to me sometimes, she'll say, well, you know, I, 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 there are some things in life that I never accomplished. There are some things, and sometimes I, I feel like I've failed at this, or I, I wasn't some great career woman, or I didn't do this or do that. And I remind her, and I say to her, Anita, yes, but you did what God called you to do, and that's be an excellent mother. You were a wonderful mother. God called you, Miss Deborah, God called you to be a mother and a grandmother. My land, where would Peyton be if not for, for a strong grandmother in her life? Do you see, God called you with a purpose. So it's time, church, 2013 is the right time to seize that purpose on your life and say, Lord, I'm going to fulfill what you've called me to do. And see, we as a church, it's not just as individuals. When you, when you seize that purpose individually, guess what happens, Louie? The whole church comes together and fulfills the purpose for which God has called the church to. He didn't call us to assemble up in here on Sunday mornings and listen to a worship team. Because let's be honest. Can, can I be, when, no, I'm going to get to that part. I don't That'll be in hour number two. I'll get to that part. Praise the Lord. But we, God did not call us to assemble up in here and hoard all the good word to himself. Y'all seen that show, the hoarders? Have y'all, you, you've seen that show? Those people are crazy. <laughs> I want to tell you, if there's any hoarders in here, don't you invite me to come to your house to eat. I ain't eating that the roaches are running up the walls now. I'm going to go ahead. I'm one of them preachers that I look at, look at things now. Don't be coming in. I had to fight my way through 
newspapers from 1927, eh? He ain't having that now. Come on. <laughs> y'all, don't, y'all are like, I can't believe he wouldn't come to my house. <laughs> All right, I ain't coming. You, 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 better, you better get it straight before I get there. I'll talk about you. Praise the Lord. It's time that we get focused, our church. Listen, Christ said in Luke chapter 11, 17, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against a house falls. You see, we got to get on the same page. We've got to get refocused to say, you know what, I'm tired. And listen, I ain't, I ain't asking it. Can I say ain't? You, you know, I'm from Johnston County. It, it's going to get real bad before I'm done. <laughs> Amen. I'm running out of big words. So I'm going to have to start with some of the southern slang. Praise the Lord. But I'm not doing it out of selfish desire, but I believe that God wants to see every seat in this house filled. And not with just people that go to church down the road. You know, not with recycled Christians. You, you, you all understand. When I say recycled Christians, you know the ones that say, let me, let me go to this church for a year, and then I'll go to that church for a year, and then I'll go to that church for a year, and then I might have stopped going for a year. Y'all ain't following me. Hey, man, y'all praise the Lord. He wants people that are saved, that, that people that are coming in that don't know him, have, have never known him. He wants us to go spread that word. See, not just in church when it's convenient. Oh, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. I do. Lindsay, I love Jesus. Miss Josephine, I love the Lord. He wants you out there at work saying it, doing it. And see, when we all are doing that, guess what? The whole unit, the whole corporate gets blessed you see but if we don't know where we're going isn't it hard to get if we're all pulling in different directions isn't it hard to get everybody focused on the same page i remember one time uh, julie and i were going to to myrtle beach to to see my beloved tar hills play amen the rest of y'all that don't like them are sinners but we were going, uh, we were going to watch uh, actually UNCW, which Campbell beat here the other day, and I don't even want to talk about, which I'm an alumnus. Uh, and we went to see UNCW play Chapel Hill. And we were on our way to Myrtle Beach, and that was back before we had GPSs, or we might have had them, and I was too poor to have one. <laughs> Amen. And we were on the way to Myrtle Beach, and I took a wrong turn, taking a shortcut. Because Miss Betty, I used to do map quests and say, I, I, can, I can divert around this and go around that. And, and then before I knew it, Josh, I was lost. So I looked at the direction of one thing and it said, I-55 West. And I was so confused. And I hate it when Julie's right. <laughs> but I was so confused. And I said, well, we're okay. She said, are you sure? I said, we're fine. She said, are you sure? I said, we are fine. Long as we keep going west, we'll hit water sometime. <laughs> Julie looked at me and said, uh, she said, that's exactly what she said. Yeah, California. And I thought, what is she talking about? I started to say, you just be quiet let me drive. I know where I'm going. And then something went off, a light bulb. I actually came back into earth. <laughs> And I said, wait a minute, I'll hit water in three days, not an hour and a half. I know what it was, is I was in Latta, South Carolina when I got lost. That's exactly where I was at, and that's home of Raymond Felt, who played for the Tar Heels. You all really need to start watching more TV. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I had no idea who I'm talking about. But, and that got me all excited, because he was their point guard at the time, and it got me all excited, J.G., and threw me off. But see, when you... Get confused, and you're not on the same page. How would we have ever gotten there unless the light bulb turned on? And every once in a while, it does turn on. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. So here's the thing. For us to get focused, we have to know what we're getting focused behind. We have to know what we're getting behind. Because church, let me me say this. I don't want to play church. 
I don't want to play minister. I want to be a disciple of God. See, when I get to heaven, I want them to look at me and say, listen, this is the original 12, but here's the one million disciples I had. And I want to be somewhere over in that group. Actually, I want to be over here with the original 12. And see if Peter, if we can go fishing in heaven or go hunting Josh. I, I don't know what we'd hunt up there, but maybe go. Who knows? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll find out when we get there. So I've been doing some research, which is dangerous. Uh, and I've been looking at some things. And I've been thinking about this church, how it relates with this church. And, and we do many things uh, pretty good. But we've got a lot of things that we need to do better. And I read, this, uh, I read this article the other day, and this is what it said. It said that when people come to a church, they want three things. They want a true experience with God. They want to find true community. And they want to discover a sense of purpose and personal significance. Now you'll say, okay, well, how does that help me achieve vision? Let me give you the vision of the church. Let me give you the vision of our church so you can follow this in 2013. We've dumbed it down and made it simple for everybody. It's basically about souls. It's not complicated. It's basically about souls. We want to win souls for Jesus Christ by Jesus Christ. You see, that's the vision of the church, is we want to go out and we want to win souls. Now, three things people want when they come into a church or they visit a church. They want to have a true experience with God. Now, now, now let me say this. Any dummies can put together a worship team. Not calling ours done, because Tony, he's a pretty big fella. I think I could outrun Pastor Brandon and Lindsay, but... Tony, I ain't for sure about it. He's got a bicycle. He chased me down. <laughs> but any dummies can put a worship team together and then get some good-looking pastor. That wasn't fun. That wasn't fun. Why was that, why was that fun? <laughs> any good-looking pastor to come up and give you a 30-minute boring sermon, go home and call that a true experience with God. See, they could add lights, and they can add band, and they can add all those things, and, and people would leave and say, oh, man, I had a true experience with God. Not to me. Then there's the flip side of that, and some people will say, well, we're going to sing the same hymns that we've sung for 92 years, the same four hymns every Sunday, and then the preacher going to drag himself up to the pulpit, and he's going to preach an a hour-and-a-half sermon, and actually be five sermons in one, but that's how we view it, and they're going to leave, and they're going to call that an experience with God. You see, the, th the thing with experience with God is I believe that church is to show love, that you're to love one another, because if you can't love one another in the church setting, you might as well forget trying to love the sinner or the people that don't go to church. Because you, you haven't gotten enough practice on the people in church. And you can't fake love. I don't believe you can fake it. Now, some people say you can, but I don't believe you can. Because if somebody looks at you and they say, I love you. And as soon as you turn around, you got to worry about them taking a knife out and sticking it in your back. That's not love. Johnston County, that's not love. You know, that's. I don't know about Harnett County, Pastor Gordon, but Johnson County, that is not love. It kind of reminds me of, of uh, uh, Braveheart. Have you seen that movie? Praise the Lord. Some of you still haven't ain't following me. You're, you're, I've, no more movie subtitles for me. Uh, Braveheart, there's one part in there where, where the crazy guy comes and, and the guys say, we don't know about him. And they're in the woods and the preacher they had, a, they had a priest or a preacher comes with this crazy guy, and they all trust him because he's the priest or the preacher. And then they go out in the woods, and the priest tries to kill, uh, what was his name? Oh, Wallace. William Wallace. There you go. Tries to kill William Wallace. Dale's with me. You, you like that kind of movie. Blood and guts. Amen. 
and uh, uh, tries to kill him, but it's the crazy guy that throws and saves him. You see, there's moral of the story is we're all crazy. <laughs> Amen. So trust one another. But a true experience with God, we've, we spent, how much time we spent, Josh, talking about it starts in the parking lot, it ends when they leave the parking lot. So you can't fake it. A true community with God. The second thing there is, is uh, find true community. We're blessed at this church. I've said this many times because we have a church that resembles our community. Not everybody is, is pasty white. Yeah, look, look. Some of you started looking at your skin when I said that. Amen. Some of you are freckled like me. Amen. Praise God. Some of you have hair. Jesse, some of you don't. <laughs> Praise God. Don't like it. That's all that matters. That's right. It has to be, my granddad used to say, it, there has to be one perfect head in the book. But we're different. We're a different kind of people. But we love one another, right? I don't, I don't look at Jose and, and think, oh, well, he's uh, Mexican. I look at Jose and think, he's my brother. Matter of fact, we, my, my parents done claimed you as my twin brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I look at Tony. I don't look at Tony. I, Tony, I don't look at the color of your skin. I look at my brother. I think of him as somebody I love. They want to see true community. So for you to fulfill that purpose, for us to feel, fulfill that purpose, we have to be in connection with God, willing to show God's love. And then we've got to be a sense of community. Some of your best friends should be right here in this church. Did you know that? That's why I, I encourage you to invite your friends to. It's a new concept we're trying here at Crosswalk Church. Uh, we're, we're just trying to invite anybody that is willing to come. Amen. And then discover a sense of purpose to, to realize that everybody wants to belong. Did you know that? Did, did y'all know that? Everybody wants to belong. I don't care if it's at work. It's at, I start talking about uh, fishing. Everybody wants to know. You don't want to not know anything about going fishing, right? You want to know some. Start talking about baseball. Go to Miss Lou. She knows all about it. Can quote, if it's about the Orioles, she knows about it. If you like football, go to somebody. I'm sure they like <laughs> Like carpentry, go talk to Terry. Terry knows all about it. Now, don't expect him to do it your way. <laughs> Terry has a special way, doesn't he, Justin? He has a special way to do his building. It's called the Terry way. Praise the Lord. That's what he says. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But there's different, different uh, personalities. But people want to belong. So we've got to get over the notion of, of that it's just all about us and get focused and say, you know what? It's about entering new people into the fold of the family. I, I, I get to talk to people all week. Believe it or not, as a pastor, I try to talk to people all week or a preacher or even as a person, I try to talk to somebody all week. You know, I had to watch the kids once in a while now, and, and uh, that's a rough life. <laughs> Amen. I, was, I told Miss Gail, I, w I went to that daycare, her daycare the other day, and I told her, I said, if I had to watch children all day, whoo, glory, I'd be tore up from the floor up. Is that, can I say that in church? I'd be, I'd be hurting. I told Brandon, I, I don't know how he does it. Two hours that he works a day. Because <laughs> I love my children, but boy, they can get on my nerves. Me and Julie counting down 10, 10 more years, 16 more years, and they're gone. They're out of here. We're going we're gonna to have a good time being married, but they're gone. Come on, some of you are right with me. Don't, don't, don't you look at me and judge me. <laughs> but do you see... I like to get out and talk to people, and I love to tell them about my family. You see, my family sh has shrunk. It's, it's grown, but it's shrunk. And I think of all of you as my family. People want to feel part of the community. They want to feel that you want them. So you say, Pastor Ron, why are you telling us all of this? 
why are you saying all of this and you're getting ready to go over your 30 minutes and if you break that, I'm not coming back. Because here's what I believe, folks. Do you realize the impact that a church has on people's lives? See, we disperse truth and discipleship to people. We tell them about Jesus and then we tell them how to be like Jesus. And then we do... Uh, some other things, uh, five-fold ministry, we pray together and we eat together and we fellowship together. But you know what? In those times when you need them the most, Caitlin, that's what, where the church should be. The, the Bible says a friend will stick closer to you than a brother. Your church people will be closer to you than your own family. Did you know that? Because I'm going to tell you, maybe you didn't think so, but talked a little bit about about Braxton and his stuff. But this year when some of you called me. And said we're praying for you. Or you sent me an email. Or you posted something on Facebook. And you said man we're praying for you. We're going to remember you. You don't know how much strength. That gave me. You see uh, when I had my little episode. With a kidney stone. <laughs> hey man. And I thought I was dying. For about two hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I don't care if I ever get one of them again. <laughs> Pastor Brandon, uh, here I was laid out in my nightgown. That thing, you know, and it didn't wrap all the way around. So it's not a holiness nightgown. It's a holiness nightgown, but it's more holy than holy. You, y'all get what I'm saying later. Keep thinking about that on the way home. You'll get it. <laughs> and I was sitting there and... Uh, I was begging the nurse to give me some drugs, and uh, she came, and she dropped it on the floor. Busted the little drug vial that she was bringing it with. Now, I'm going to tell you, folks, that at that time, I was ready to strangle her. I was ready to say, woman, how much do they pay you? I, she said, don't worry, I'll, I'll be right back. And I said, I hope it's not going to take you 15 minutes to get back here. But they finally got me doped up. <laughs> and Pastor Brandon came in. Him and Samara came. Of course, they were in the area looking at expensive furniture. and They were saying something about it, it was Josh's money. Who cares? Or something like that. And uh, not really. Samara said, Josh better not say anything. Um, but I remember how I felt when he came to the hospital. It made me feel good. Even though I don't remember much of it, it made me feel good. Or all of you that pray, Jose left me a message. And that, those things, you see, because that's what church does for people. So you'll say, Pastor Ron, if the vision is it's all about souls, and you want us to get focused, what, what do we need to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Amen. I love how this works. Uh, I'm glad you asked because we've got some things here at the church that we need to work on. And I'm going to lay these out for you in the next five minutes. So you've got to, if you've got a pen and paper, you might want to grab these and write these down because we're going to go fast. That's one. Five minutes. It might be ten minutes. Give me ten minutes because I'm, I'm slow. I'm a southerner. I'm slow. The first thing we need to work on is assimilation. You see, when a new person comes in church now, that's a big word, by the way. <laughs> hey, man, I still got a few, Louis. Stay with me. Uh, when a new person comes into church, I do all the follow-up. I send them a car. I send them an email. I send them a car. And then that's usually about the gist of it. Or I'll call or what have you. You see, we've got to get where you, we as a church, some of you got to say, Hey, I need, the pastor needs me to help him in week three and four. Because usually I do a two-week follow-up. I need help week three and four. See, when a new person comes in, they don't want to sit down and, and have nobody talk to them. And act like they've got the plague. They want to feel loved, part of the community. So we've got to get better at assimilation. The second thing we've got to get better at is getting connected. Now, we haven't lost a lot of people that have come into the church, but here's what we have 
had. Some of you are going to throw rocks and stones at this one. We don't have a consistent church in the sense that, that we don't have a lot of consistency as far as people coming every Sunday. Because we're not tied to ministry. Because your pastor and your associate pastor have gotten in a small church mentality that has said that uh, five people can do all the work. Ten people, we can do all the work. We need help in the uh, uh, sound room. If you can put up with Anthony, we need help in the sound room. If you know about sound, JG, uh, some of you others, we need help. We need help running the camera, sound media. You see, that's getting connected. Now, we're going to do some things this year that's going to help you get connected to this church. Here's what we're doing. We're getting ready to start connection meals every other month. Every other month, we're going to have eating with the staff. <laughs> Don't you like that? I included me and you into that. You, you like how that works? See, we get free food. I, praise the Lord, this job has benefits. And, uh, but we're going to start with people that, that will have regulars come by invite, and then we'll have some of the newer people so they can connect and know families and know who to call so they can have friends in the church. And they, they know that if they need an electrician, they know who to call. If they need uh, somebody to come and build them something, they know who to call. If they need somebody to come and insult them, they'll know to call Ronnie. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But that's part of the connection process. That's some of the things we're doing. We're going away from Wednesday night Bible study. Uh-oh. Look at that. It got quiet in here. It got hot. It got hot. We're actually going to start our small groups. Like God gave us the original vision and told us to build it through small groups. We're getting ready to start a men's and women's group. How about that? We're going to let the women. We're going to turn the women loose by themselves. To help us, Jesus. And the men, there's no telling what we're going to get into. And we're going to do those, maybe on, the, we haven't finalized this, but we've got, we've got time frames to get this done by February the 1st. Like the men might meet on Wednesday night. The women might meet on Monday night. Because here's what we realized. We realized that the children have ministry. They have the nursery. But on Wednesday night, a lot of the same people are working the nursery. Or the, the, we're, we're not getting enough adults, disciples. So what we said is we'll get some men and uh, we'll take and the men will start and the women will start and we'll be talking about this. Lindsay leads our women's ministry. Be able to come and get connected. Women will be able to know women and men will be able to know men. And then eventually we'll come together and, and hopefully everybody will get to know each other. Praise the Lord. And if you're single, we'll have all the single people line up. And no, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I tried, Anthony. I tried. Uh, but that's one of the things that we're doing to help get connected with, with each other. And then we're going to grow the ministry. The third thing we're going to do is, or let me say this. I forgot. The third thing under connection that we're getting ready to do is the cafe area. Back there where we said we were going to have coffee and we were going to have hot chocolate and donuts and we'll cook turkey sausage and turkey bacon for, for some of the healthy people in here because we're going to try to be a healthy church as well. And then we'll poison you with all the sugar and Krispy Kreme donuts. Praise God. Or you drink diet drinks and overcome all that. And, uh, but the cafe, we're getting ready to close it down to open it up. Miss Betty, if you haven't seen her artwork back there, walk back there and look at that. Is that not phenomenal? Doesn't it make you wish you could draw? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I just like seeing what she done. I come in and there's a skateboarder on the wall now. Amen. He wasn't there, I don't think, last Sunday. Kind of makes you nervous, him looking at you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going to open up the cafe to help with connection, folks. That means uh, every morning at 9 o'clock, Joanne Jeffries, you and I are getting ready to get together. I got a sheet with your name on it. Praise God. And it's good stuff, too. Every morning at 9 o'clock, you go eat McDonald's or you go to McDonald's and buy coffee. Guess what? We're going to sell you some coffee in the back and some biscuits and bagels. Or, because we want you to come early and get what? 
Get connected. Get to know people. If you want to know people, come. It's a non-profit shop. Nobody will make any profits off of it, I promise you. Any money we make off of it, go to the building fund to buy, build us a brand new fellowship hall. Amen. Then we can eat all the time. Praise God. So that's connected. Then the third thing we're going to focus on is getting ministries to grow. Church, listen to me a minute. And I'm going to close because I'm beyond my five minutes. I went seven minutes. For those of you time me, I'm, I'm on it. If you're not active, you're going to get fat and satisfied. Now, I'm not talking about around the way. I'm talking about if you're not active, you're going to come into church. You're going to eventually get tired of it. And you're not going to come no more. But if you'll come and you'll work and you'll take part, I promise you, 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 God will change your whole outlook on your whole life. I promise you. Because some of these guys, man, I've, I've witnessed some of them coming in here. Uh, Jose and Terry and my dad. and Some of these guys, man, have come in here and they have worked tirelessly. And you know what? I believe God's blessed them. I believe he's blessing you right now. He's performing miracles in your name because you came and sacrificed and work. You see, we got to get busy. We don't need five people doing all the work. We need help in the media room. Greeters need help. We need help cleaning the church. We need help. Because see, here's the thing, church. If we get focused and we get the ministry right, guess what we can do? We can go outside and we can start telling people that Jesus is Lord and that he died for them. He rose again so that they had eternal life. We can get all excited and get all warm. And you know what? We can come in here and we start having church. Come on. We can come in here and get all. Could you believe that? We can get excited to come to church. People start smiling instead of looking like somebody walked over their grandma's grave. That's a southern thing. They probably don't say that in South Africa, do they, JG? I didn't think so. They will cut you. In Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet this morning.